Welcome back. In the last video, we saw a basic example how to make a dataset PCF using the Fluent UI details list. We can use it for tables, for reviews, or for subgrids. The subgrids are a special case, though. There might be some situation where we want to show tables that are not directly linked with the hosting form. The relation could be through several table and another relations. In that case, we can always use the web API to retrieve the data. But in this video, I would like to talk about possibility to programmatically use the dataset PCF to make that kind of subgrids. That will keep the PCF generic without hard-coded requests and will allow the maker to have a guided customizing experience. Let's see what's possible and how it's done. But first, the intro. The first approach would be to customize the subgrid to show all available records and filter the records using code after that. Let's consider we are on account form and want to build a PCF showing all products for all orders corresponding to the account. We're going to start by binding the subgrid PCF to the order products, linked into the order table, and then filter the records for the current account ID. So let's start. We have the data set where we have to add the linking to the order. So we need an add linked entity. We're going to do that in the init method. And we're going to take the tables order where we make the linking from the order ID to the order ID. The link type is inner. And we have the alias parent relation. It's important to remember that. We add another property to the component. We have the entity ID. And inside the function component, we define another use effect. This time in dependency on the entity ID. So each time the entity ID change, and we know this will change only once. So when the entity ID is not null, we're going to add the filtering to the data set. And uh, the condition for that would be on the attribute name account ID, the operator it's equal and the value, it's entity ID. We add the prop and the alias name, parent relation, the name we've defined in the linked entity. In a manifest, we're gonna add the lookup from the data set to the parent table. And we add two more properties, the name of the parent entity name, so the order and from the order to the lookup, to the account, the lookup that we need. So in the init function, we can read now the properties, the parent entity name, and the parent ID, we find it by going to the through the columns and looking for the one with the alias lookup ID. Now we can replace with uh, the name from the parameters, parent entity name to parent ID name. And we can do that if these properties are not null. Now we can go to the component and add the two new properties, the parent lookup name and 
and we can replace now the attribute name with a parameter. So when the filter is set, we need a data set refresh. That will call another update view and that will call another use effect. And as an optimization, if the filter is not set or the data set is still loading, we don't need to calculate the columns or the items for the details list. Now inside the index.ts, we go to the update view and pass the parameters. We have the entity ID. We're gonna read down for that for now unsupported because I don't know a better way uh, except making some more parameters and the name of lookup name. We are ready to bundle and to upload to the environment. Now inside the customization, we're gonna choose all record types and we're gonna choose the order products. We're gonna choose the control the PCF from the list. We have there to look up to pend, which we can choose from the list. So we have the order ID. The parent entity name would be the table name for the order, so a static value with the name, name of the order table. And the second one with the lookup from the order to the account. That's it. We can save and publish. So to see how it works, we open an account form, go to the subgrid and we can see all the product name for all the orders corresponding to the account. So have a look. These are the orders related to this account. And if we go to some other account, we get the products filtered only for this account. And we have only one order. For the second example, we're gonna start with two data set. We're gonna use the first for the order and gonna let the platform filter that for us. And the second data set will be for the order product, which we can filter based on the first data set. So we'll start with adding another data set to the manifest. We have this time the child data set and here's the place where we define the property set for that. Uh, using npm run build, we're gonna get the parameters. Uh, we start with the same example as in the previous video. So it's a simple data set, um, details list example. We're gonna rename the data set to the child data set because what, what we want to show are the products and add the data set. So now the use effect is dependent on the child data set. And we won't render, we we'll and we won't calculate the columns and the items uh, if the child data set doesn't have a filter or if the child data set is loading. And of course, we need another use effect. This time, we have a dependency on the data set. So each time the data set changes, uh, in case it's loading, we won't calculate the filter, but after that, we get 
the column for the parent ID from the child data set. We do that by going through all the columns and find there the one with the alias lookup ID. If that's not null, we're gonna start to add the filtering to the child data set. This time we're gonna set some conditions with the attribute name parent ID, the name of that column. Then we have condition operator eight and that's in. And the value are all the sorted records ID from the data set. So that's it. Now we have the child data set filtered and we need to call the refresh. We go now to the index TS. We have nothing in a change in the init method, but we need in an update view to pass the child data set parameter. So it's much cleaner as from uh, as in the same example. We can bundle now and we can upload now to the environment using pack PCF push. Now inside the environment, we go back in the customizing to all related records. We choose there the orders and attach the PCF to the subgrid. And the customizing is much simpler. We just choose the second, second data set. That would be the order products. And we're gonna add the lookup to parent. That would be the order ID. So now it's done. We have to save and publish. And we can see how it's working. So we have the code on the right side with the effects where we wait for changes. And we go to the subgrid and we can see at first the child data set has 25 records and the data set has five records. And there's the place where we set the filter when we inside the second use effect, we have only six records left in the order product. And the record are filtered on the orders corresponding to the account. Comparing with the web API way of retrieving data, we have now one disadvantage. The data is loaded first without a filter. Only after we set the linking and the filtering programmatically, we'll get the data set filtered. The advantage of this approach, though, is a generic component, easy to customize, but even more important, we also get the advantage of the interaction with the ribbon, with the search box, and with the view switcher. The two ways of filtering showed in this video have pretty much the same result, but there are small differences which might uh, make a difference if you plan to choose one or the other. First of all, let's see about the customizing. Uh, while in the second example, the maker experience is guided based on the metadata, in the example one, the customizer needs to define the field names uh, so he can misspell it. Also, it's a little hard to explain what's expected there. 
so the meaning of the properties can be misunderstood. In the second example, the purpose of the parameter is clean, and I can choose from um, the fields with a drop down uh, respecting the metadata. When we think about paging, in the second example, the filter is applied directly on the loaded records from the first data set. So if the first data set needs paging, we are able to filter the second data set based on the record loaded in the first data set. So only on the first page we could do that. In the first example, the paging applies directly to the data set. If you want to group the data, we need to sort on the lookup ID, otherwise the paging might mess up the groups. So it depends what kind of record we need uh, to page. The most important part is about the platform integration or interaction. In the first example, the search box, the view switcher and the ribbon bar applies to order products. I can search both on products and order by configuring the quick find. So um, regarding the ribbon interaction, the user can interact only with the ribbon commands for all the products. In the second example, the search box with view switcher and the ribbon bar applies to orders, so the parent table. It won't be possible to search for products using the standard uh, search box. I might need to make an own search box inside a BCF to take control on searching on products. The standard ribbon buttons will be only for the order table. 